Welcome friends to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host Seishu and I speak with industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others. And they bridge craft with commerce and help you create a sustainable and creative business. And my friend Spencer Lum, who's with us today, is one of those guys who's, who steps up every single time and says, let's see what we can do to help the photography industry. Um, he's my mentor, so I welcome him here as both a, a guest and a mentor. So thanks for joining us, man. Hey, Seishu. Love talking to you. Great Absolutely. being here. I want to know this new thing you're launching, my friend, who's, which is called Mass Desire Method. I want to know exactly how, first of all, how you came up with the phrase and what it means and what it means for photographers to learn from you, especially about this new resource. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the thing is, it sounds like really grand, mass desire. Yeah. And it's actually this old school term. It's a tribute, actually, to this great, great ad guy uh, named Gene Schwartz. And he, he coined the term mass desire. And what it is, is really actually just one desire shared by many people over and over. Like you've probably heard about targeting your ideal client. Yes. And the idea really is that when you target an ideal client, what he talks about is you, you want to pinpoint one perfect person out there. Right. But the thing is, if you hit that one perfect person just right, you're going to find a bunch of other people who fit that mold. And so the real trick is kind of getting that narrow and that specific. And it was a, it was, it's just such a common thing with marketing that we tend to look at it as this big, massive crowd. And there's just no way to get narrow enough and focused enough with an ideal client profile. And so really I named it in tribute to him, but also because, I mean, I think there's just something very powerful about this idea of desire in marketing. And very few people actually really think, well, how do I make people want me? But if you can, right, you can get people to do anything, right? I mean, desire is what motivates all people to do all things. And so I wanted to create a course that was focused on that element specifically. Awesome. So you, you, you're you breaking down the entire idea that but which, which I think most uh, teachers will say to their students, find your target client and then serve them really well. Uh, but I often feel like th while, the, while the, the teaching is clear and easy to understand, it's the, the steps beyond that that always sort of confounds uh, photographers, especially photographers like me. You know, when you said, you know, not you, but when I've heard it said, you know, work and just serve your target client and, and really focus on that person uh, and define that person, people start to say, how do I do that? So yeah. what do you what do you usually tell people, like what is what would you say to me uh, in terms of figuring out what my target client should be like? Is, yeah, that, the first, is that the first step, <clears throat> first of all? I mean, I don't even know. It, 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 no doubt. I mean, in a way, it's kind of circular, right? I mean, I think of it as the first step. I think a lot of people think of it as the first step. The truth is, marketing is a really circular process. It's like you, the, the key isn't so much that you have one first step, one second step, one third step. I mean, in learning, that's yeah. everything. Right. But, but in truth, I mean, as we all know, there are a thousand different things that you have to think about and that you have to put together. And it, really, that was the focus of my course is that I have felt so lost so many times trying to reach out to that perfect person wherever they are in the world because there are just so many things to think about. And I spent years trying to put it together because each time I would have a breakthrough and then things would stall. And then I'd have a breakthrough and things would stall. And it would feel like people would never really appreciate my value. And I realized what I needed to put together was a linear process. So even though in a sense marketing, I mean, you can learn this and this and this, and if you do it right, I mean, they will eventually add up. But if you have a process and if you have steps, then yes, you can speed you can speed up the entire learning process, and you can kind of give people a straight line that gets them from point A to point B. And that was really that was really what I wanted out of things is I wanted to take this vague idea of an ideal client and find a way to break it down into four specific parts. And so I have a four part formula. And so if you nail all four parts, then you will create desire. And that's really the key. It's that simplification because we've all heard it before, right? You've got to reach out and you've got to find this ideal client. But I think, you know, once, as soon as you start doing it, it explodes 
into a thousand different things. And then overwhelm sets in, right? Oh, absolutely. And then you get stalled and then you never get to do it. You, you stop and you say, you know, I'm going to go and live life instead. And then you never do it. And then what happens is the next year is the same as the previous one, which is and then the year after that is the same as the year before. And at a certain time point, <clears throat> I mean, we only have so much time to give in life, right? Sure. You are either moving somewhere and getting somewhere or you're stuck. And being stuck, I think, is just the worst feeling. And and kind of being in the same place with your business, you know, one year, it's not that bad. Right. Two years, three years, four years, five years. I mean, as you go in, though, at a certain point, it actually just drains all the passion you have for the photography because it becomes such a distraction. And right. so... And then, and then you feel burnt out and then you just yeah. say, okay, this is not for me and move on. So, I mean, I love the idea that uh, you're giving people a system essentially to yeah. uh, attract the right clients to you uh, mm -hmm. and they're able to serve them in such an honest and beautiful way that their businesses really thrive. And this is one of the reasons I talk to people like you, Spencer, is because I feel like uh, you're offering people not just a solution that uh, will last them only a year, but this could last them a lifetime, essentially. Oh yeah, um, yeah. and it, it and it and it would help them essentially, at, you know, scale their business over time as well. You know, it's not it's not a one target client, and that you're going to serve only one client. You're going to try and find right. many, 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 many people like that target client and serve them really well. Um, Let's flip this over on the uh, on the positive side. I know the the overwhelm and the burnout is so real for a lot of photographers like me uh, mm -hmm. in this industry. But uh, what could this course do on the positive side? What I mean, imagine I went through the four steps, or yeah. one of my listeners is has you know stepped up and said, "Okay, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the Mass Desire method. I'm going to learn from Spencer and do this thing." Uh, what can that person, that photographer? see over let's say course of maybe a year or maybe two years what is the right what, what what's spin it positively and tell me i mean you're not promising anything of course <laughs> based on it's all right. based on the, the work that they put in right yeah, but yeah. uh if they did do the work what is the the upside of this right well i mean you can think of it like this i mean the the big thought usually when you're working on marketing for most people is going to be, well, how do I get the word out, right? People are always thinking, well, how do I get the word out? But the way you can think of most marketing is almost like it's like a bucket with a bunch of leaks pouring out. And so what happens is like people will hit a website or people will send in an inquiry and they'll even get as far as saying, you know, I really love your work and then they'll disappear. And what you need is you need things to stick. Like you need to build up the way I describe it is if this were the inquiry line, what you need to do is you need to build up so much emotional momentum that people, they don't just love your pictures, but they find you unique and different and they love you specifically because there's no one else like you. And if you can do that, then it kind of, it breaks through that wall and pushes to the other side and gets you to the meeting where you can actually talk with people however you do it on the phone, on Skype, or, you know, continue an email conversation. But you need to build that emotional momentum. And when you do, and you learn how to do that, it blows up your market. And the analogy I use, like if you could imagine the market as this like big iceberg, right? Traditionally, when people target their ideal client without knowing it, what happens is they target just like the tip of the iceberg. And you can think of that as the tip of the iceberg, the way I describe it is they're the gimmies. That's shooting fish in a barrel. They're the clients who look at your pictures and love you so much that they will see it and say, I've got to have this person. But the problem is we all know that most people out there, they can't really understand photography. Like they look at pictures and they're like, I can't tell the difference from this person and that person. And they're all kind of the same. And if everyone looks the same, then if you don't give someone a different reason to hire you, then they're just going to book whoever's going to be the cheapest because in their minds, it's all the exact same product. And so you have to give them something different. So the way I describe it, right, those people who love you and get your pictures, that small percentage, that's the tip of the iceberg. Now, there's the bottom of the iceberg that you want to ignore. That's the people who just don't fit or, you know, who you'd call price shoppers and who will send you something and all they really want is your price. And, you know, you don't want that either. But there's this big section in the middle of the iceberg and they're the people, they like you a lot. They'll say they love you when they send you an inquiry. They love your pictures. But what it is, is they like you a lot and they're looking at maybe five, six other people. And so your chances at that point are maybe one in six that you'll get the business and it's going to be based on that point. 
on whether someone who like whoever's number if there's someone who's number one who's better <laughs> that person will get it or you know if there's someone who's cheaper than you that person will get it but it's kind of a crapshoot and what you really want to do is you want to take that middle audience who likes your pictures who are great clients and who if they were to work with you you're you know you're gonna you're gonna get everything you want out of them and you want to instill that desire so that they break through that inquiry wall and they connect. And that's what it's really about. It's about teaching people how to create the desire, which allows them to target the middle portion. Instead of just saying, here are my pictures and, you know, hire me if you love it. It's really creating an experience and a process that actually starts to make people see you not as just like a picture taker, but mm -hmm. see you as you and say, you know, I've got to have this person. There's no one else like that. And so it explodes your market. I mean, because as we all know, the tip of the iceberg, that's the smallest part. And so as soon as you go just one level down, great clients, you know, and untapped too. like almost no one targets that audience. So there's less competition too. it, it just you're, it captures so many more people. And it also just gives you control of your marketing because when you know how to make people do stuff, you feel like, okay, I, you know, when, when your audience wants you more than you feel like you need them or want them, right. suddenly life feels completely different. Are you, are you referring in some part to what is now commonly called personal branding? I mean, do photographers need to sort of step their game up and really to, to stand out, really be branding their personality as well? Is that what you're trying to get at? It is yes, but no. And here's why <laughs> I say yes and no. And, 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 you know, there's a, a, there's a reason I'm pausing. And what it is, is I mean, branding is, and branding is part of what I talk about in the course. So it's not like I don't talk about branding. But here's the thing about it. Actually, I'm going to use a quote that I just talked about. And I'll give you an example, specific not to, to cl photography clients, but to photographers. So I had a landing page and I was running a webinar and the phrase I use is like, okay, I'm going to show you how to crush the price shopping reflex. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it pulled in, it, it did really, really well. It converted tons of people. And the reason it did is because I did something that Robert Collier, he's a famous, famous marketer for a long time ago. What he used to say is like, you have to enter the conversation that people are having in their mind. In other words, if you say exactly what people are thinking about and hoping to hear about they're going to find you irresistible. But there are a lot of steps to make that happen. It's not that easy to do. But if you can do it, then you'll nail it. And so, for example, I say, OK, cross the price shopping reflex. And everyone has like a lot of misery. Like there's nothing more painful and frustrating than price shoppers, right? It's really annoying. Or even worse, sometimes you have people actually, this is actually even worse. Sometimes you have people who actually you know are good and you know that they won't seem to want something more than just price shopping, but they can't quite understand what and you don't know how to reach out and grab them. I mean, that's kind of the middle of the iceberg, right? But anyway, if I say the word price shopping, because to a photographer who's been really frustrated, I mean, I am entering the conversation in their mind, right? But if I were to say something like, hey, learn to write, which I could have said it that way. I mean, it's not about, it's not a writing course, but I mean, you could say, well, you're using words and you're learning to, learning about people. And I could call, if I were trying to market to, let's say, writers, I might say, learn to write. I mean, I guarantee you zero photographers would bother to sign up for a webinar like that because that's not the conversation they're having in their mind. And so when you talk about personal branding, there are right words to use. There is a right type of design to use. There's even a right personality to adopt. I mean, there are a lot of different things. There's a right benefit to pick for your product. I mean, it kind of goes on and on and on, right? And what you have to do is like, it's not just about kind of getting your personality out because what the world really wants, like people, we have this notion that what the world wants from us is to kind of climb up the hill and scream at the top of our lungs and say what we believe. But actually, that's not what the world wants from us. And that's not what makes people pay. If you want people to pay, you want to climb up to the top of the hill and say what they believe and what they want. And so you look at someone like Steve Jobs, and yes, he had a very personal vision and he clearly believed in it all. But at the end of the day, every product he did, like you could not help but look at every product he came up with and imagine an amazing life for yourself. Every value he championed, it wasn't just his value, it was the value you wanted to hear championed if you were a fan of Apple. And so that's what people really want. And so it's a creating a process of alignment between what you do and what people want and building those individual steps so you pick the right brand, you pick the right words, you pick all the right things. And if you do, 
then you create desire. That's what makes people start to see you as you. And uh, and the funny thing is, it serves the client because you're talking in their language and you're learning to enter their world while you still get to shoot and do things the way you want. Oh my God, I love this. I really do. Uh, and I hope folks who are listening in and watching uh, you know, your webinars also jump in and sign up for this course. I mean, this is like the, the thing I think pe- that can set people up for life. I mean, that's, that, that's my hope. <laughs> that, yeah. Right. I mean, imagine, imagine, I mean, I'm just, I'm just get, getting really giddy here because the, the idea is that you're giving people the, the, the tools, the steps, the, the, not the script. I don't like, you know, when people give people scripts, I just get a little nervous because you're never going to sound like whoever's writing the script. Right. Yeah. But you're giving them really every kind of resource available uh, to really up their game. I mean, this is phenomenal. And yeah, that's that's what I'm going for. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I want people to, I, I, you know, my goal is to over deliver. So I want people to get something. Yeah. Like one thing I learned is with my learning material and the things, the, the courses that I've taken and the people I've learned from. I mean, I go through my notes on, uh, you know, I have a lot of things that are like the classics and the foundations of marketing and psychology. And I go through them every year, or at least I try. <laughs> And, you know, I will read some books, some books I've read like five, ten times, because the thing is, like, as you grow, you understand information differently. And I want to give people something where they can come in and if they haven't done a business before, it's going to get them going. But then they can come back a year later and it's going to be like even better because you're like, whoa, and they're going to see like it's it's kind of like holding up a mirror and like allowing you to look at your own marketing and seeing kind of how to what to do with it and where to go. And so every time people step back and look at the mirror and they say, OK, this is what I'm going to work on this year or the next year. And so it goes. Awesome. Um, th- this is pure gold. I mean, my opinion, this is pure gold. I, I, I hope everybody signs up uh, for Mass Desire Method and your other courses. And, you know, honestly, the way you teach uh, is is from the heart, I can tell. I mean, you're not just a photographer who's just turned into a marketer now and, you know, wants to just step up and scale your business and, and sort of make money off of other photographers. This is this is genuine. I mean, I've heard you speak many times and, uh, you know, this is great stuff. Uh, where can one find out more information about Mass Desire Method or anything else that you do? Best place to go is just go to wwwground class dot com slash mdm actually that's what everyone's been calling it lately mdm i guess mass desire method is too much of a mouthful so mdm (laughs) so ground-glass.com slash mdm and that gets you all the information fantastic and i think i I failed to introduce you properly in a way uh you're not just a photographer but you're also the the blogger behind ground glass which is a, a just one of the top photography blogs out there um and it's, it's, a, it's a huge honor for me to be able to speak to you like this. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.